let's talk about uh, the tools which are used in, uh, in developmental biology. One of the uh, tool which is uh, clonal or mosaic analysis, um, that is very important uh, and it has played a uh, extremely significant role in um, understanding development in fruit flies uh, in particular. I gave you an assignment about uh, flip FRT system. How many of you have done this flip FRT assignment? One hand is raised, who else? Two, three, four, good, five, good. Five hands are raised. Only five people did it. Hmm. We talk six, who is sixth one? Yeah. Six hands are raised. Others should also look at this assignment uh, by yourself. I'm going to tell you why you need this tool. Uh, what is important that this tool really, uh, while understanding or studying or characterizing genes involved in development, uh, became a must-have tool in in uh, in labs. So let's say you generated a mutant. So a static is a mutant. And you have it over a balancer. Uh, you have it over a balancer because so this heterozygous uh, is alive. It survives. But as soon as you have homozygous mutation, it's dead. Now, if you have to study function of this gene at a developmental stage, let's say a late developmental stage. So this is embryonic lethal, let's say. Embryonic lethal means homozygous dies at the embryonic stage. If you have to study you say, I'm interested in, you know, studying development of wing. Role of this particular gene in development of wing or eyes. So people relied on this flip FRT system. What you do, you have your mutation, uh, which is heterozygous and it's viable, you have it on chromosome and you recombine your mutation in such a way that after the combination, your mutation comes with FRT sites. There are flies, there are transgenic flies available which contain FRT sites, individual transgenic flies, which contain FRT sites on let's say, left arm of the chromosome, then same FRT sites are on the uh, right arm of the same chromosome, chromosome two, chromosome three, and so on. So you use these flies, cross your uh, flies with FRT flies, and then uh, you get F1. Let's say you don't have a mutation here. In F1, you have now uh, your mutation over uh, chromosome which carries FRT, you will use this as a female cross with a male uh, containing, uh, you know, balancers. And then in the next generation, you select for flies which have uh, FRT and your mutation next to each other. They are on the same chromosome. FRT containing chromosomes can be selected simply on uh, neomycin, the trust in which integrated FRT it is resistant to neomycin. Now, let's say you have these flies now, where you have FRT, then 
uh, your mutation and you have to keep it over a balancer, Strabel or Tabby or Carlio or whatever, because homozygous will die. Okay. Now, what happens that, so here you see, uh, you have FRT with uh, your chromosome. I should have an extra. Yeah, here one can draw. So you have your FRT with your mutation, and normally it's only viable if you have uh, heterozygous, okay? Um, which will be just FRT alone or a balancer, no mutation. We, in order to trace our mutation, we keep it over balancer chromosome. Let's say here we have Tabby phenotype. We cross this with now another line which contains FRT. And this also contains, and this is a homozygous line, FRT. And it also contains, these two chromosomes also contain ubiquitin, ubiquitin GFP. So all the cells which will be containing GFP, so GFP has NLS as well, or without NLS is also okay, but NLS, which means nuclear localization signal in GFP and GFP goes to the nucleus, it makes the analysis easy. You cross this uh, and this line also contains heat shock flip on the X chromosome. Now, X chromosome is what you have homozygous, which means heat shock flip is on both the X chromosomes, heat shock flip together with this, let's say on the third chromosome. The progeny of this, which will be the, uh, what will be the progeny, you will have FRT and your transgene over FRT, ubiquitination GFP, okay? Or, you will also have this over this chromosome, the balance and the other flies, possible flies in the same progeny are FRT, uh, GFP over Tubby balancer. You can simply select these flies there based on Tubby phenotype because at embryonic stage, they are Tubby. So normal embryo is like this. They're, the Tubby is like just like this tiny one or tubby, you know how tubby uh, English word is, a bit fat, little fat. Uh, our flies of interest or progeny of interest is this one. In the progeny, we what we do, we said we are interested here in wing development, okay? So instead of going to adults, we say, okay, um, these flies will be all will be viable because they're all heterozygous, carrying heterozygous mutation. But 48 hours to 56 hours after egg laying, we give a heat shock. Now what heat shock is going to do because these flies are also containing heat shock flip. Flip is enzyme under heat shock. They are going to act on these FRTs, this one, and induce recombination. And this is what is happening. So recombination will be induced. Okay. FRT marker, the GFP, okay, FRT R mutation. Due to recombination, and this is happening in mitosis, during mitosis, uh, 48 or 56 hours after egg laying, this is the second instar larva in flies and uh, larva is growing mitotically. Now due to recombination during mitosis uh, with the help of flip enzyme. 
Now, what has happened that we will have cells in, uh, because recombination took place here between FRT sites here. Okay, so this went to this one and this went to this FRT site. The consequence is that we will have a cell which will contain your mutation homozygous and the other will be what we had FRT over FRT which we said GFP NLS. They will become homozygous which is this one. They will glow much stronger because these are homozygous GFP. They will not at all glow, they will remain dark, okay? absent, uh, GFP will be absent, and but your mutation will be homozygous now. And there will be third kind of cells within the same tissue where no recombination has taken place and we will still have heterozygous state. Our mutation and the heterozygous state, no recombination. So we'll have three kinds of cells where we'll have heterozygous cells, which means low GFP, heterozygous, homozygous GFP as a result of, and then dark cells which are lacking GFP, and these are clones, mitotic clones of R mutation minus minus, and we can see, analyze the effect using some molecular markers. We can look at, you know, some wing specific genes to see if they are being expressed in uh, these cells or not. So this is how we, study um, the role of essential genes uh, in different developmental stages. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, that was uh, one strategy. You can also use a uh, Crelock system. I told you last time to go. How many of you read about Crelock system? How many of you read about this system? Hmm? No one. Not good. So Cree lock system is also Cree is a sorry. Cree is a recombinase. It induces recombination. And locks P are the sides in DNA where recombinase X and induces recombination. People have used Crelock system to generate knockout mice. This is because this is induced through homologous recombination. So please go back and read about Crelock system. Okay, so Crelock system is not only used to generate knockout mouse, the mutant mouse. You can also, in, in former times, people use Crelock systems, uh, system to generate knock-ins. Conditional knockouts. Conditional knockouts. Conditional knockout means you will use tissue-specific Cree, let's say I'm using heart specific Cree. Cree is under an enhancer which is only active in heart. So the animal which I'll make, it will be all normal, but when I will activate the Cree, as the Cree is only in the heart, the knockout will only take place in the heart, rest of, not in the rest of the body. So this is conditional. You can think of using neuronal CRE, so only taking, knockout is only taking place in uh, brain. 
You can also do knock-ins. Knock-ins means, because it's a homologous recombination. Through homologous recombination, you can go in. This is a wild type gene on a chromosome. You make, once you will read Creelock system, you will read about the constructs they prepare. So in your knock-in or knockout construct, you will introduce some mutation, which carries lock speed, sides, et cetera. And after Cree locks, what has happened, your locus for that particular gene is intact, but you have replaced the wild type gene with your cassette uh, for the gene and that cassette contains just a point mutation. Let's say there is a serine, a key phosphorylation site. You have replaced it with alanine. And let's say we call it, you have produced a kinase dead gene. Now, when you do such experiments, it's important to, you know, uh, if you do it in the genomic context, in the original ge genomic position without disturbing the rest of the things, you say you have created a mutation. And this is like a knock-in. You, you have knocked in a particular mutation, site-specific mutation. Uh, epistasis, you already know. Uh, epistasis uh, is not that important for this particular lecture, but uh, in your bio 2 to 1, we had like a complete lecture about epistasis. Epistasis is a genetic way through crossing and then looking at phenotypes to see interaction between uh, two genes, A plus B, whether A and B, they interact with each other or no, whether A and B are in the same pathway. Uh, and then eventually you see development of a tissue organ or cell type or you know a specific phenotype. Okay. Um, in bio two to one, I would say, go back and revise your uh, notes. What is epistatic, which means upstream, and what is hypostatic, the opposite of epistasis is hypostatic, whose phenotype is masked by uh, the gene, which is epistatic. So just read that. I wanted to cover, uh, yeah, we did cover knockout knock-in, conditional knockout. Um, ectopic expression we did cover. Uh, you, you know, um, we talked about this uh, when we did this example of uh, UBX gene. This is basically expressing a gene away from its natural location. Natural location means if a gene is expressed only and only in the wings, I'm expressing it in wings, uh, in uh, eyes or vice versa. If a gene is expressed only in the eyes and I'm expressing it in the wings, that is ectopic expression, okay? You can also, in developmental biology, we also saw experiments playing with the gene dosage um, we have. We increase the gene dosage of Bicoid to four times, six times, eight times, and then see, uh, the impact on uh, development. Uh, timing is also important of gene. Uh, we call this analysis spatial temporal regulation. Normally this happens in the organisms. Genes are expressed in specific space and in specific time. And you can change not only ectopically by in space, you can in time also activate a gene in its specific tissue where normally it is expressed, but you say, okay, I'm going to express in, so normally it's expressed only in the embryonic stage. I'm going to express it at larval stage. That is also ectopic expression. Now, how do you induce uh, such ectopic expressions or you know what we call, uh, we also call um, inducible expression. Uh, we use specific promoters like here we have heat shock promoter, metallothionine promoter, metallothionine uh, responses to heavy metals like copper, okay, metal inducible promoter. And um, then what we see, so our transgenic animal will have our gene of interest, which is A, 
under tissues uh, um, sorry under an inducible promoter which can be heat shock or metallothionine promoter so if we give heat shock if the promoter is heat shock responsive a will be only active in that so let's say this is the developmental time frame day 0 to day 10 of uh, development so organism is living normal after 48 hours of development you give heat shock you say okay 37 degrees celsius for 15 minutes and then what we see temperature bring back to 25 in flies this is the time window for 15 minutes for expression and then we see the effect okay you can also have metallothionine promoter a similar experiment you do you have transgenic cells or animals and then you add in this particular time point or whatever time point of your interest you add in the food or media copper and that will induce this particular promoter and gene will be active and then you see whatever developmental phenotype you want to uh, analyze there's also a, a very robust uh, inducible system which is called tet inducible system tet inducible system this is basically tetracycline inducible uh, system we have a very strong promoter and then in front of that strong promoter we have a tet operator this operator is bound by uh, tet repressor okay and then this repressor blocks the expression of uh, this promoter and gene remains silent as soon as we will add tetracycline in the media the repressor will be removed due to binding of tetracycline and now cauliflower mosaic uh, CMV promoter, cytomegalovirus promoter, it start expressing the gene of interest. Okay, so this is about uh, inducible expression. There is also targeted induction of expression, and we talked about this. If we have, for example, a specific enhancer, you can take eyeless enhancer uh, of eyeless gene, which is only and only expressed in eyes and then clone your gene of interest. You make fruit flies, and then uh, this is only expressed in uh, eyes, okay? GAL4 US system uh, also is targeted induction. Um, you can use specific enhancer. Let's say we were just talking about eyeless enhancer. So eyeless enhancer is activating GAL4 transcription factor, and your gene of interest is under UAS binding sites, uh, which are GAL4 binding sites uh, in the promoter region. And then your transgene is under the control of US. When you will cross the, these transgenic flies with your US gene X transgenic flies, wherever this enhancer, let's say we used eyeless enhancer, only in the eyes gene X will be active. You can use uh, same US GAL4 system has also been used uh, in combination with FLIP FRT system. This is very interesting. What they did, very intelligent way of producing, we just saw uh, knock, uh, the mitotic clones uh, by you know in the mutants with, with mutant phenotypes. Here we are seeing um, overexpression of specific gene uh, using FLIP FRT. What we do, we have actin promoter, which is one of the strongest constitutive promoter. Then we have a CD2 gene, a stock codon, which is then followed by GAL4. So now GAL4 is not directly under the actin promoter because there is a stock codon here. And you have your gene of interest, US, your gene of interest, US, GFP. You will soon see what is going to happen. You cross your flies with this particular fly line and you give heat shock because these flies also contain heat shock flip. Okay, 
Now, after heat shock, what is going to happen during mitosis? There will be recombination, and recombination is taking place between this locus and this position and this one. This recombination is going to remove CD2, and actin promoter will start activating because now intervening sequence is removed due to FRT he, uh, flip FRT recombination, and this become next to it. GAL4 is constitutively expressed in the progeny of this cross. Okay, GAL4 will bind to GFUS as well as your gene. Wherever, let's say we have imaginal disc, wing imaginal disc, wherever you, we will see GFP, let's say this is GFP positive. It means this recombination is successful. GAL4 is being expressed. And these are the cells in which our gene of interest X is being overexpressed. Clear? We did already talk about enhancer trap. Many about detail may lecture may cover kiya tha, enhancer trap promoter trap. Uh, I want to show you using this system what we just saw. You can also do a similar kind of thing. Instead of overexpression, you can say I want knockdown clones. Knockdown clones means doing RNAi, so the system is same, but here in UAS, instead of wild type gene, you have cloned the X in inverted repeat construct with a spacer. When this will be active, it will make a double-stranded RNA like this, because this is anti, this is sense, this is anti-sense, this double-stranded RNA will be expressed similarly like in, in these regions where GFP is also being activated. And here you have, then this will be recognized by Dicer and you will see knockdown of this particular endogenous gene of X will be knocked down due to presence of these double-stranded RNAs being produced. And you can see effect of knocking down X in specific cells uh, using same US GAL4 system. Is it clear so far? Have we covered this one already in the lecture? Uh, targeted expression screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, in flies, they, they used it uh, very intelligently and what they did, they had uh, produced, so this is called targeted expression screen. What they did, they inserted US, which are gal binding sites, randomly. They produced transgenic flies. Let's say 5,000 independent transgenic flies, which contain US. And US, when on P element you have US sites, P element gets integrated randomly in the genome. And mostly P element has preference in the five prime UTR. Now these fly lines, you cross with gal driver lines. And what is going to happen, gal is going to go and bind on this, you have US binding sites. And if our US is integrated upstream of individual gene, we will see overexpression of this particular gene. And this can be done in eyes, this can be done in uh, any specific tissue by using uh, specific GAL4 driver lines. And then you can see effect of this overexpression of a particular gene uh, on the developmental phenotypes, okay? Here you can see if uh, your US, <coughs> sorry, landed downstream of a gene, uh, there having this GAL4 will produce anti-sense uh, of normal gene, which will interfere with the expression. And you will see instead of overexpression screen, that, that will dodge you that, you know, it's, it's basically a uh, RNAi mediated knockdown phenotype. 
So with that, we finish till here because this is an independent topic and uh, we'll on Wednesday, today is Tuesday, on Thursday, uh, that will be the last recitation I'll take as a tools and then the discussion on papers will start. I, I said on this week, but I, uh, I think we should cover this last tool as well before we start discussing papers. Any questions? No more questions, no questions. So if there are no questions, uh, I wish you all a, a wonderful day and I look forward to see you all nine in the morning tomorrow. Don't miss the seminar, okay? Do you have the link, Zoom link for seminar? Um, no, sir, if someone can email it. Achha. Abdullah, can you share the Zoom link with all of them? Okay. Please, right away, so that they mark their calendars. Okay. Okay, so the ones who were missing in the class also send them. Okay. I wish you all a wonderful day. Allah Hafiz.